What's up guys, Shea Stevens here, PDJ number 77522, and today I'm attempting Christopher Strasberger's Disc Down Challenge. Let's get to it. So before we get to the challenge, there is something more important I'd like to talk to you guys about. If you're part of the MVP fan community, you've probably seen some posts about Chris's family. His wife, Stephanie, recently gave birth to a daughter, Eleanor, and she was born with a heart condition. I believe she just underwent surgery. She's under care at the hospital, obviously, and it's been a strain for the family, obviously. Uh, they have little ones back at home in addition to the new baby. It's like two hours away to the hospital, so it's been a trying time for them, and a website was set up to support them. Uh, I have it linked down in my description below. I'm reaching out to the Discoff family. You guys are awesome to help, and, you know, always eager to help people out in their time of need, and we got one who's in need right now. So if you're able to support in any way, I would greatly appreciate it. You can buy uh, T-shirts uh, with a logo on them. They have a traditional GoFundMe link set up as well, if that's more your style. But if you are able to support in any way, I am going to be doing a disc giveaway. It will be in the next video, the back nine coverage of this challenge. So to be eligible, you just need to make a donation. It's going to be purely on the honor system. I'm not going to ask you for a receipt or anything. But, you know... Please be honest about your donation that you actually made one so you can enter the giveaway. So check out the next video to see how to be eligible for that disc and to see what it is. Uh, so moving on to the challenge. Chris put this one out like two months ago and I think it was supposed to wrap up a month ago, but he's obviously been busy. So uh, the challenge is pretty simple. Disc down. Take all your drivers out of the bag. Fairways distance and leave yourself only mids and putters. Go to your home course and play around and compare your scorecard to the last scorecard you know you played with a full bag and see did you do better the same basically the whole goal of this challenge is to show you how valuable control is and i think it was a great idea i actually went to my home course tyler state park and i filmed a video on hole one uh because in two positions it's a par four and so many people get baited into throwing a distance shot off the tee and that's not the play it sets you up for disaster so i was showing you know mid-range or putter layup to the landing zone and then upshot has a much higher rate of success and i've actually never done it for the whole course though so when chris put this challenge out i knew i wanted to do it so without further ado here's my front nine of the disc down challenge so this is just me doing a little pre-round bag check, bag check. Start, i forgot to mention the last time i played this butter, layout with my full butter. bag I shot Shot a plus two. Not my best showing, but that is going to be the score I'm trying to be today in this challenge. And then uh, Entropy's Plasma Electron. Now, a lot lighter. We got Deflector, Beat Up Electron Matrix here, Reactor Hex, and then three Envies. So, let's see how it goes. Starting off, hole one is in the B position today. It's a 515 foot par four. Goal is to get out into the gap there that you see, but don't go too far into the OB long grass, and then turn right for the upshot. My play here is my electron matrix on a hyzer flip. And it's my first throw of the day, so I don't really hold that hyzer angle too well. This one flips up to flatten and hyzer, gets to the corner. I really like throwing a forehand into this green, but I'm getting a little cut off here on the corner, so I do have to throw Anheuser with my Envy. Like that out of my hand, but actually come up pretty short. So we'll be a little in touch with nature here with a patent pending. Got my soft eclipse anode, and I thought I had for a second there, just about a foot short. And tapping out on a hole one with a par. Not a bad way to start the day. Next up, hole two, I'm playing from the CT pad, the ugly. It's a 224 foot par three. There's a couple fairways to take here, but my play is an Anheuser with the Entropy over this bunker on the right. Flex through the trees and hopefully drop on the green. Reset there for myself. And I get this one just a bit too high and tickle a branch. It shoots me down here left side of the fairway. So I'm pinned up here on the bunker. 
All I got left is a little forehand up. And I steal one. That one felt real good. Getting myself to minus one. Next up, hole three is all the way back in the C position, making this a par five. It's about 830 feet. We haven't officially measured it yet, so it's back there. I was also playing through a group on this hole, so I was trying to play at a good pace. I'm taking the hex, hopefully, up the middle. I was kind of trying to throw like a weird kind of anti flex, let it go left a little bit, clip some trees. So I got down the fairway I'm on the left edge. There is OB road on the left hand side, just thick rough and a ditch on the right. So I'm trying to play the reactor on an Anheuser, force it over. I like the line, but I tickle those leaves and they do kind of stand me back up. So getting good distance, but pinned on the left hand side here. Taking the hex on a forehand, trying to split this field goal, but wide to the right. And it was actually turning over and cruising back towards the fairway, but I kick a tree branch and it puts me into this mess here. So, Unfortunately, all I have left is a big Anheuser and a prayer just to give myself something close to the uh, green. So I flop down. Uh, somewhere like far circle two, maybe even just outside of it. Take a look here. That, there's the green. The bass is up on that Target elevated area. hill. I came down the left-hand side of that wooden bunker. And unfortunately, I messed up filming the upshot because I was in the hurry. So I did just throw a little forehand around this big tree here, put myself up under the basket. For a tap in bogey. Hole four in the B position is a 360 foot par four. This is a very tight fairway that bends to the right into a very narrow corridor. There is a slope to the right, which just can easily roll down. I'm trying to avoid that. Game plan here is to hyzer flip my beat up entropy right at that next T sign you see right in the middle of the fairway. And again, unfortunately I didn't hold my eyes or angle. Turns one to the right a little bit and I hit in the corner. Looked for a while after this one turned out to be like standing on edge up high, thankfully. But I don't really have much. There's some hero lines that would be really foolish to take, so I just pitched to the middle of the fairway. As you can see here, running this would be absolute death. So I give it a half bit anyway. Hit the pole, luckily don't go up on edge. And knock in the park. Hole 5 is in the A position, playing at 241 feet. It's a par 3. This hole is aptly named Cattle Shoot. You need to get out of the chute here. And the basket is off to the right. About 70, 80 feet past that big tree in the middle there to the right hand side. So I'm trying to force over my Eclipse Envy. Put a good move on it, but didn't get as much flip as I wanted. So I wind up about pin high to the left. Somewhere out by Circle's Edge. Unfortunately, those bendy trees are kind of in my way there, especially that right one. So I'm going to have to straddle around. And no chains required. Card another birdie. Hole 6 is also in the A position. This one is playing at 224 feet, par 3. You'll see the basket is elevated up on some steps. This is a pretty routine shot. Just throw the entropy on a little bit of hyzer and let it work to the basket. Real misses are sawing off earlier, kicking right on those trees. Hit my line perfectly. This does all the work. That one just feels so satisfying to throw. You can see here, pretty much parked. Tap in my birdie. And somebody left a lid in here. I don't know why. No name or number or anything. Make it look pretty. And yeah, moving on. Hole 7 is back in the C pin. It's a 271 foot par 3. And there's a reason this hole is called Serenity now. There's an OB road on the right. And there's a slope on the left. It's like 45 degrees pitched down into a creek. A uh, real scary shot. So I'm taking the hex. 
I think I'm a little afraid of what I did on hole three here, so I overcompensate, turn it over a bit, hit a cheeky gap, yeah. and I thought I was actually going to slide into the green, but I kick a tree. So you can see here on the left-hand side, this is the slope. It is not a good time to be down there. I've done that There's before. Do not recommend. Here, but that is not fun down there. So this shot, it's a fool's errand. I would not attempt that. I'm just laying up, taking a three and getting out of here. You can see that cliff and slope drop off right behind the basket. That's in a Chamonix Creek in the background. So take my par and move along. Nature appreciation moment. Heading over to hole eight. Shammy Crick over there. Hole eight is in the A position. It's a 256 foot par three. Left side rough is pretty thick. Right side is a drop off into Nishamity Creek. So again, another tight fairway. Gonna be dialing the hex up. Release it left, but get a Crazy Anheuser through the pro gap. Kind of stole one there. So I always joke that when you're short, every putt is uphill, and this one is definitely uphill. Trying to find my footing, get comfortable. Hit chain, splash out right, and luckily sit down next to the basket, because that could be an ugly roll away. I'm going to be hopping up here, tapping in my three. And wrapping up the front nine, hole nine is a 558 foot par five. This hole has a lot of elevation change. It's a very winding fairway. There is a cheeky play if you go off to the right where you can play over the road and have a, you know, dirty look for Eagle, but definitely need some drivers for that. And it's real risky. So usually play either to blast up the hill here or play short. And I usually try to blast up the hill, but I'm going to try a putter and just give myself good footing. You'll see a problem a lot of players have is they try to make the hill and they don't do it and then they have horrible footing. You can see there are all those roots on that hill. So my putter does go a little far. I realize I don't really have much to work with. Don't want to try a hero shot, so I just throw the entropy up on a nice hyzer, give myself good position in the middle of the fairway. So I have to turn this corner here kind of through that field goal, and if you look right in the middle of the field goal, that is a wasp nest. I'm terrified of wasps, so... Take the reactor on hyzer, nice and high, get scared as it pushes forward, but I make the corner and don't get buggy, which is a win. So throwing downhill, I'm going to take my glow envy on a little bit of hyzer through the field goal, the basket's across that creek, right behind that little rock wall there. Get myself on the green. Need a straddle putt. What's happened? A relatively stress-free par which is a nice change of pace for this hole. Thank you for watching the front nine of my attempt of the disc down challenge. Remember to check out the back nine coverage to see which disc I'm going to be giving away. And thank you to everyone who's able to support the Strasburger family in their time of need. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this and other disc golf content. Lastly, Thank you to my sponsor. For all your disc golf needs, check out Basket Bashers Disc Golf.